Hello everyone. As usual, Russia is, you know, in the process of denying everything and taking advantage of um, any less than perfectly courteous statements about itself as an excuse, a, you know, a possible provocation. Here is the example. So what's this all about? Well, um, Russia is conducting nuclear exercises. Uh, obviously, it is a show of force. And, uh, of course, they're accusing everyone else of escalation. I'd like to remind everybody that neither Ukraine nor EU nor NATO nor U.S. started the war in Ukraine. There are no... NATO soldiers, UN peacekeepers, or US soldiers in Ukraine other than private individuals who basically went there voluntarily, not as representatives of the US military or government, but as themselves. Okay? So, however, anytime somebody makes a statement in support of Ukraine, Anytime somebody points out the similarities with World War II and the need to treat this conflict as such, Russia ramps it up and ramps it up and ramps it up and basically points out that nobody's safe. Now, remember, if you look, um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, these are the same people who said they will not start a war against NATO members. But... There was a big butt in there, and that was that uh, they consider military bases of NATO members, including the U.S., free game. And once again, I'd like to remind everybody that a military base is technically considered to be the territory of the country that it represents, just like a... A uh, ship is considered to be the territory of the country from which it originates. So, if Russia does go through with this and attack, for example, British military bases or U.S. military bases, technically it will be attacking British and U.S. territory, respectively. Sweden is another country that is speaking up and again pointing out that Russia wagging its tongue like that is inexcusable. And again, it's sort of um, something I'd like to start calling the Trump effect. How much leeway are we going to give Russia? Just like how much leeway are we going to give Trump? So we have this country that first hacked off a piece of another country started uh, introducing its own militants to stir unrest in uh, its neighbor's territory, then invaded the country and continues issuing nuclear threats to others. How much longer is the world going to tolerate that? Just curious. Of course, the conversation continues in Ukraine as to how to plug the holes in the front line what to do with the troop rotation, and so on and so forth. So, what is what is going on with that? Um, as we said before, there has been a new wave of military conscriptions, right? And uh, a lot of people said, well, that's a good thing. That means that the soldiers that have been fighting there for two years can go home. No, and this is why the gentleman in this particular article, a, a member of Ukrainian mil military, says, no, we can't go home yet because this is all happening very quickly and the soldiers are not trained. Basically, not only is it important to have the people, you can't just send people out into battle without any preparation whatsoever. That would be stupid. And Ukraine doesn't want to be a military butcher like Russia is. So, the experienced members of the military cannot leave. 
and it is unclear when they'll be able to leave, even if fresh troops start coming in, because training takes time. And another thing to consider is that because of the complexities of this war and because of the length of the front line, the troops have to be moved quite a lot. So the troops have to be prepared to operate in different weather conditions, different terrain, with different equipment, and so on and so forth. So, yes, it's nice to have some fresh reinforcements, but that doesn't mean relief for the existing troops. More information is coming in about Russia's attack on Ukrainian civilians during Easter Sunday, no less. Again, I'd like to remind you that Russia has been screaming from the rooftops how religious they are and how much they are fighting this war to protect their faith. And yet, they had no qualms about murdering civilians on Easter Sunday. As far as we know, at least three people were killed. Like I said, all of them civilians. At least 24 others have been wounded. One of them was an 88-year-old woman. And... Again, I want you to remember, you know, we just had Easter last month. Imagine if you were celebrating Easter in church. And your ch church, while you were in there with your family, with your friends, with your kids, got hit by a missile. Meanwhile, the guy responsible for all this, of course, is getting ready to get inaugurated because he removed term limits in Russia. In case you all are wondering what is waiting for us if the Republicans win the White House again, this is probably coming. While it's true that a lot of countries, including the U.S., uh, decided to boycott the inauguration, uh, not all of them did, but... That is not the only thing. So, Matthew Miller, a U.S. State Department spokesperson, said that, yes, we don't consider the election to be free and fair, but Putin is Russia's president. I'm sorry, what? How, how is that possible? How can you say both? You can't have both at the same time. Either the election is free and fair, in which case, yes, the person elected is the head of the country. Or the election is not free and fair. In which case, the person who has been elected is cannot legitimately be the head of that state. Now, I'm sure there's some type of international protocol that exists in terms of how you treat heads of state or how you treat dictators who basically just put themselves there and refuse to leave, which is exactly what Putin is. Does that remind you of someone else we know about? Yeah. So maybe State Department and the rest of the U.S. government, you need to rethink that position. Because this man should not be treated like a legitimate leader of his country. 